An hour down the motorway at Leeds University is Professor Derek Scott, a specialist in music from the period when Benjamin Doubleday played the banjo. Hello, Professor Derek. Well, it's an honour to meet you. It's an honour to meet you too. <laughs> You're very lovely. Thank you for having me. So, Professor Derek, I've got a review to read you okay. that made me cry. So it says, Mr. B. Doubleday, his rendering of Home Sweet Home with variations was received with enthusiastic applause and merited the determined encore which followed. I mean, what a review. That is amazing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And so how would he have learned to play the banjo? Well, I think that he had something like this, a banjo instructor. Do you think he was self-taught? I think he was self-taught. Yes, see, my dad is. <laughs> my dad's self-taught. Where did this banjo come from, do you think? The banjo came to Britain when a, a kind of entertainment we now know as blackface minstrelsy arrived in, in 1843, the Virginia minstrels. They were all white, but they used burnt cork. They pretended to be plantation African-Americans playing. And this was the normal style. Let me just show you the kind of banjo at this wow, time. It's got a great um, instrument. It doesn't have a resonator on the back, so it's not as loud. That it's got the um, nylon it? strings. It would have had gut strings. It's a very different sound, isn't it? And no frets on it at this time. It's like a violin. The kind of minstrel style was just... It just went like... You'd simply put a, a cymbal on your finger and strummed the banjo. If I played the tune... It's too abrupt. Yeah. So a style of banjo developed, and, and your great-great-grandfather would have been part of this, where you just use the thumb, index finger, middle finger, and try to keep banjo going all the time. I mean, this is a, I'm amazing. not a banjoist, but... That, that, that's the kind of style. And this became known as the classic banjo style, which well, is my still dad does. used today. So that review, saying that he... Where, where was it? Let me read it, that last bit where it says, whose remarkable power over that instrument proved it capable of much greater resources than are generally attributed to it. It's that... So he, I th yes, that's I his think, cooking and everything. I, I think so, yes. <laughs> Benjamin Doubleday was a trailblazer in this new style of finger-picking. By the time he performed Home Sweet Home in 1886, the banjo was moving beyond minstrel shows, which had been popular with the middle and upper classes. This respectable audience now became interested in the banjo in its own right. They elevated it to the height of fashion with concerts and parlour performances. I think we've got another clipping in here that will show just how talented <laughs> your great-great-grandfather was. Look at this. The Bohe brothers. The Bohe brothers at the Albert Hall. It's the Sheffield. Oh, it's Sheffield. No, wait a minute. <laughs> I should say. I know people go, oh, it's not the real one, then. The Sheffield Albert well, that's Hall even better. was a wonderful, well, wonderful course. hall. It burnt down in 1937, unfortunately. Oh, no. But it was a grand hall. It was a, an impressive concert hall. Wow. Held over a thousand people. It was, it was... And who are the Bowie brothers? They came to Britain in the 1890s and established themselves as the great banjo players of the day. Wow. So they've come over. A special programme was provided for the last evening at the Albert Hall, but owing to the extremely unfavourable weather, the weather was a it's nightmare. All, well, this is the grim well, north. This yeah. is, isn't yeah. it? We're used to it up here. The favourable weather. The attendance was not so good as it otherwise would have been. In addition to the clever playing, acting and singing of the Bohe brothers and the members of their company, Mr and Mrs Doubleday and several of their banjo pupils attended and greatly delighted the audience with the display of their skill and proficiency on that now popular instrument. 
Wow. And yeah. It's a irresistible day. Both he and his wife are playing, but also they're playing with the greatest banjo players of the 19th century. <gasps> the Bohe brothers, they were African American, but they were from Canada. James Bohe was the number one banjo player. It would be like uh, playing violin with the Hoody Menuhin. He was the outstanding player. Playing for respectable audiences, the self taught Benjamin Doubleday had come a long way from his working class roots. His earliest performances would most likely have been in public houses, in rooms used as music halls. They were noisy places, crowded with working men expecting to hear bawdy songs, not the ideal venue for an accomplished musician. But as Benjamin Doubleday became more ambitious, he took advantage of the banjo's popularity with a very different audience. If you think of a pub song of the 19th century, like, my name it is Sam Hall, chimney sweep, chimney sweep, my name it is, and it ends, it has choruses with, and I hate you one and all, damn your eyes, you know. You wouldn't <laughs> sing that in a middle class drawing room. No. Really. But Home Sweet Home, let me give you Ooh, an a rendition. example of this. Like your great great grandfather played. Mid pleasures and palaces, Though we may roam, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. <laughs> you don't get more respectable than that. You're singing about the virtues of home, the family, and yeah. all that. So, of course, people would applaud very loudly, thinking Victorian values. Right. <laughs> Oh. Now, because I keep doing these plumbing plays in London that I'm so out of my depth, <laughs> he must have been nervous playing with these posher audiences, mustn't he? He must have but been, he because kind of people knew who the tradespeople were, who the working people were, who the upper middle class were, who the aristocracy were. Just an accent would give him away. Oh, we've got a working man really? in our drawing room. <laughs> So how but don't worry, he's a very good banjo player. <laughs> but it's incredible, because my mum and dad work all the working men's clubs up north, playing country and western music. And my dad is fantastic on the banjo, so this is just... But that is remarkable, it's isn't it? It's just incredible. Because, you know, it was country and western music that saved the banjo, really. That kind of five-string banjo was enabled to survive by early country musicians. Charlie Poole was an uh, early example. But then, in the 1940s, people like Earl Scruggs in, in Bill Monroe's Bluegrass Boys. And bluegrass develops bluegrass, with the, the five-string band. And that's the... a three-finger style as well. Right. So that's where the country and western link yes. has come. I <laughs> this cannot song, tell you. you. Must play it. I can't say how excited I am to tell him all this. I'm so proud of how talented he is. This link is so I, I, special I wonder, for me. Because when it comes to music, it's amazing how often a family seems to pass musical ability down. You know, more and more on this journey, I'm wanting to learn to play. I feel like I've got to, it's my eyes. Okay. I have to carry You're on. Becoming compulsory now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look, here it is. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Let's so excited. get in here. Okay. Well, yes, I'm, I'm oh, a gentleman. Excited, thank you. You are Look, a gentleman. Oh, let's go. Hi, Nick. I brought someone to see you. Hello. Hi, Brand Hi, Sheridan. Sheridan. Very yeah. nice to meet you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm so excited. I've suddenly become interested in the banjo. Got plenty of them. Have you? Well, can I have a lot? Yeah. Please. Head over this way. I've got the prof with Fellow me. Hello, expert. He's brought me to you. And, uh, yes. Yeah, so I... Oh, Quite a few. There's quite yes. a lot of different types. So, something like this. Wow. Be. Check the tuning. <laughs> There you Sounds go. amazing. Nice and loud. <laughs> so... Can I ask you a question? Certainly. Please. Um, you know, see my nails? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I'm a massive Dolly Parton fan. Mm -hmm. And she has big talons and can play, but she's got a certain way of doing it. Now, is, is it best to get have one hand with on nails one hand, and one with none? It's brilliant, yes. On one hand, it's really good because it adds volume and to the more attack. Yeah. So it's really good, really useful to have. On this hand, yeah, it's best to get rid of them. 
if you okay. can cope with Dolly it. Dolly Parton doesn't. But Dolly's, no, but Dolly's keeps, amazing. She Dolly she can do what she wants. them long on both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if I can't play it? I'm sure you'll be fine. I shall bring a stool across, cos it's best to sit with. Okay. I'll hand you that. Are going to do it now? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting all hot under the collar, cos it's pressure. My great-great-grandfather was amazing, and so was my dad. It will run in the family. Um, I'll be fine. <laughs> you better be right. So, OK, do you want me to sit on here? Yeah, if you perch there, and I will bring another stool through to... across there. <laughs> oh, my God, I've never even held a banjo before. So... It's amazing, my dad's going to this. That's fine the way you're holding it. If you try to that finger just there on that string, <sighs> there... Yeah. ..and the other one on oh, the, the, the final string... <laughs> here? No? Yeah. Yes, that, that would do, yeah. Now, what was it that one I meant yeah, to do? Yeah, that, that's easy. Now I'll try. Right, and now take them off and play that. Now put them on again. Now we could play a tune. OK, could we? We mm -hmm. could do, do your great-great-grandfather's <laughs> favourite home sweet home. Oh, stop it. If you just strum it first on those, first that chord, mid players, change chord, Opens and palaces open, though we may roam, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. That's brilliant. <laughs> That's amazing. Playing the banjo. <laughs> the first time you've ever picked up a banjo. <laughs> when you held back going, duh, 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 duh. <laughs>